You are listening to Animated Indulgence, the explicit and opinionated podcast where grown men talk about cartoons. Each episode, we'll pick apart, analyze, and dissect an animated series or movie. Warning, there will be spoilers, even potentially for shows and movies that are not the topic at hand. We may watch cartoons, but we don't watch our language. Discretion is advised. Welcome, listeners, to episode two of Animated Indulgence, where grown men watch cartoons. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Steven Universe. I am Airhammer. Hi, I'm Deus. I'm Jorik. And today, we're going to be talking about Steven Universe. Um, first things first, I guess, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to try and pitch the show to you without spoiling anything. So, you want to lead with that, Deus? Sure. Uh, I'll start out. The first thing I want to say is that this show has an astounding level of emotional maturity and heart uh, more than most adult shows I was very surprised because going in early on it doesn't seem that way it's very very juvenile at the start and it grows very quickly uh, but not in the ways you expect uh, yeah it definitely um, as, which is the main thing I want to bring up in this point is you have to give the show a shot if, do not watch like the first ten episodes and judge it on that. Like I, I, <laughs> I would be the one to contend that those episodes are worth watching, or at least some of them. Um, I know Deus would disagree on some of them, at least. But um, I think. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say go that um, you have to give the show a shot, at least. Like that, I think the Ocean Gym, the episode twenty six, I think, is a good point. If you're mm-hmm. not liking it by then, you might not be into it at all. But even then, I'd still give it the first season. I know it's. 50 plus episodes but it's worth it it might change I think mind. when you say I think when you say 50 plus episodes as a sample I don't know if that's much of a sample uh, that's almost half the show I think if you're the kind of person who is willing to trust our opinion then yeah starting at the beginning is fine but season one is a drag season one is not what this show is about and if you really want to get to the meat of it, if you want to get to the best, if you want to get hooked, skip most of it. I hate to say that, because season one does have great episodes, but their episodes may be better seen as flashbacks. Yeah, I don't know. There's uh, definitely somewhat... I, I, I don't know. We, we, we've we talked about this a lot, and we kind of disagree somewhat on this, but it's fine. That's, yeah, well, that's actually, that like leads that. me to another point. Uh, that uh, does lead me to another point. Uh, it's a show that has been planned out very very well but the delivery is a bit scattered uh, don't expect every episode to have the same importance or the same tempo uh, that is a good point and it <clears throat> kind of relates to what I was going to say in that even the episodes that um, don't seem important and and really aren't they still have a lot of hidden details in the back like there's a lot of things that pop up and that are very minute doesn't mean anything that somehow become relevant or if not important later it has a lot of rewatchability in my opinion that thing and it has a lot of references which we'll talk about later which is makes rewatchability in my opinion a little bit something to be noted Uh, obviously it's a very very kid friendly show it's obviously targeted kids it's something uh, I personally love watching with my younger brother Um, he's the one introduced it to me so there's that as well if, if you want something lighthearted and easy to watch with like younger family mem- members I yeah that's there's not much more to yeah. say what do you think air hammer I love this show now <laughs> yeah <I'm> glad. Uh, <laughs> yeah um a lot of modern programming that I've been skipping out on due to either just initial thoughts of what I see or what I hear yeah, for the most part that. But yeah, giving this a shot, I'm I'm loving it. I want to see more of it. <laughs> I'm glad. So yeah, do you uh you would rec- definitely recommend it to people. Yeah, I would. Well, yeah, I, I would like also, to say one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh in, in relation to what people may have heard about the show because it's been in the news a bit. It's won a few awards. Uh there may be some false impressions that it has uh a bit more focus 
on uh, certain agendas or uh, gender identity, while those things are addressed, they are never the central part of the story. Uh, the show is gender neutral. The protagonist is a male. Most of the other cast, almost exclusively, is female. It doesn't cater to boys, girls, cross-dressers, anything. It just is a show. So don't yeah. let any of those things influence you one way or another. Don't think that you're going to be embraced wholly or outcast wholly by the show. It just is. Yeah, it's just a thing that exists in this show. Yeah, yeah I, think... I know sometimes... Sometimes news like that could be a turnoff because you're like, oh god, I don't want to get into this, some weird, somebody's weird political agenda. Don't fret. Yeah, it's definitely. It won't come up. It's not. It doesn't come up. It. Or, I mean, it's addressed. Like you said, it's addressed. It's part of the show, but it's not like this. It's not shoved down your throat. I guess is what you're trying to get at. It's not. Yeah, it is. It's just there. It just like in real sense. life, it's it. You know, it's there. You're gonna have to acknowledge it, whether you, however you feel about it, but it's there. Um, yeah, uh, and it's handled really tact- and, tactfully, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah that's... tact is a good word to use to describe how the show handles a lot of its uh, core issues. Uh, do you have any episode recommendations for se- some people that might want to see some samples and not willing to sit through the first entire season? Uh, let's see. Definitely uh, Ocean Gym, uh, uh, and its uh, sequel, uh, or Mirror Gym and Ocean uh, Gym. Uh, Mirror Gym. Yeah, one. that was. Uh, it was also one I definitely would recommend. Uh, my favorite episode in the entire series, Ocean Gym. Uh, start with Mirror Gym. It's a two-part episode. Uh, definitely. Um, I definitely think any episode that has Lion mentioned in the title, don't skip it. That's a little spoilery, but uh, not really. But it's if you come see the ni- name come up, you'll realize why it's not skippable. But yeah, there's. It's a good show. Um, give it a shot. That's my pitch. Um, the first episode that I really enjoyed to the point where I'd call a favorite would be episode 35, which is uh, Lion 3 straight to video. It was emotional. <laughs> yeah, not a bad one. So I guess... Yeah, I guess maybe since it's like a three-parter that's spread out, I would recommend the, the three Lion centric episodes then yeah uh, <clears throat> yeah they're very they're, like I said any episode with line in its title is in my opinion unskippable uh, mm. enjoyed the season one finale episodes yep. oh yes even if you skip Incredibly. season one don't please don't skip the finale uh, some of the most iconic episodes uh, a few of my other recommendations Definitely. would be uh, I'd recommend uh, episode 74, The Answer. It's spoilery, but at the point where you want samples to decide whether or not you want to see the show continue, uh, that's one that is very, very core to the concepts that the show as a whole wants to put forth. Also, Mindful Education, uh, same ideas. They both explore the ideas of relationships and uh, emotional exploration in ways that I feel like most adults would need to see or get something out of. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys couldn't guess, we uh, all highly suggest the show. Uh, and I think uh, yeah, should... if I had a child, I would go <laughs> out of my way to watch this show with my child. And not just have my child sit down in front of a couch and watch it, but as often as I could, watch it with them and talk about it. And I can agree. I don't have a child, but I I bond with my younger brother with the show, and he really enjoys it, and he's the one that uh, showed it to me, even. So, uh, it's definitely something you can enjoy with someone younger. Has a lot of important uh, themes and messages, which we could, we'll talk about during the episode. Uh, there's a few definitions that we're going to have that we'll be talking about for the rest of the episode. A gym is a sentient rock person who's projected a human form Uh, they are predominantly most of the characters we're going to talk about and care about during the show everyone else is a human those are the only two species and uh, Steven is a half breed of some kind undefined Uh, another key factor is fusions gems have the ability to fuse with one another and become a whole new entity 
that is a combination of all the traits of the component gems. Two or more can do this, but usually it's two. So when we mention a fusion, we don't mention the fusion of Garnet and Pearl. We mention Sardonyx because she is Sardonyx at that point. Warning, the spoiler-free section is now over. Continue listening at your own risk. Next, we're going to talk about our expectations of the show. We had Airhammer record his expectations before he sat down to watch any of this after our last podcast. So let's hear what he had to think about it. Airhammer, what are your expectations going into Steven Universe? Just from what little I've seen, I'm very confused, and I actually don't know the concept, considering that the two pieces I have seen, I believe, are are filler episodes. So, like, I'm not even familiar with the bulk of the characters right now. I know of Steven, of course, who's this small guy with curly hair, a red shirt, and a star on it. He's rather annoying. <laughs> um... <laughs> He hangs out with three characters that are based on gems, and the only one I'm really familiar with so far is uh, Amethyst. Um, and then there's this Lars character who runs a donut shop or something, and that's about as much as I know right now. Um, that's pretty much. Do you what... know the show? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Uh, no. Uh... There's a lot As more to what know. the <laughs> characters actually do, I would have to assume that there is something involving aliens. Like, I, I, I'm guessing that these other gem-related characters have some kind of antagonist that's out after them that they're trying to deal with, or it's just adventures that happen on Earth. I have really no idea. Um, as to what the filler is meant to represent, well, it's filler. Uh, I yeah, I'm not really sure what I can expect of this show, but considering it's gone four seasons, it must have something going for it. Um, uh, yeah. Here's a question for you that's not just specific to this show. I know most of the shows that I know for a fact you like uh, are more uh, what what I wouldn't consider modern, right? I know you're a really big fan of Power Rangers, Transformers, uh, mm-hmm. Sailor Moon. Um, how do you feel about going into a show that is still running, show that is made for a younger audience, you know, post when you grew up? What do you think? What do you expect that-wise? On that aspect? Um, not really sure yet. Like, there are a lot of shows that we're going to be going over throughout this podcast that I have ignored for one reason or another simply based on the maybe the look of the characters if I don't have a big appeal to that I'm not sure what the show is until I really take the time to look at it which and is what Steven I'll Universe definitely would be one of those shows yeah like it's probably going to catch me off guard and I'm going to love it who knows <laughs> are, are you are you glad we're doing something like this to force yourself to watch um, stuff you wouldn't otherwise watch yeah, it would broaden my palate and uh, yeah. bring me to know new things, definitely. That's an excellent way to put it. Because um, I, while I didn't really, really love Sailor Moon, uh, when we went over that one in the last episode, um, I definitely am glad I watched it. And I'm hoping you'll be at least the same way with uh, you mm-hmm. know, with, with Steven Universe. Anyway, there's, so there's nothing really... For you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um... Steven Universe takes a format of um, it's very episodic with a greater narrative behind the uh, main episodes, sometimes very minor, sometimes taking the front seat. What do you expect from that uh, more serialized element? What do you expect from the main story? And what would you like to see for that matter? Uh, More than what you expect, what do you want? I would think that there's supposed to be some kind of primary villain that they're all up against, and you see the four of them and their conflicting differences just go up against and save the day. Like, are they just going 
are they trying to save themselves? Are they protecting Earth? Are they going up against some big universal foe? Um, I, I the show looks different from probably what it is is my best way to put it. It's oh, a good. That's a good the, the, thought. The visual. The visual has caught me off guard. Yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah. Uh, one more question. If you were going to give the show a chance, uh, other than for the podcast, other than dedicating yourself to watch through the majority of it, uh, how long would you watch it, knowing that these are half-length episodes? How many episodes would you watch before you decided to continue or abandon it? Um, Had I just been watching for the sake of watching, I probably would have watched maybe the first ten. Okay. That's about what I expected. Perfect. Um, I, I had another thought. Um, you mentioned that you already watched two episodes that were, and I, I am the one that showed you linked both those episodes. Do, I don't. I know the yes. second one was a recent one. Uh, I know this kind of dating this, but uh, it was the the wrestling episode or a wrestling yes. episode. I thought I showed you that one because I thought it would intrigue you some. Did that work at all? Well, yeah, just in the fact that I am a fan of wrestling is what got me interested in it, but. I'm as just, yeah. this is, this is I'm still thinking it is a filler episode. I'm curious as to, yeah, what a what a typical episode is like. Yeah, it's just just a thought I had. And do you remember mm-hmm. what uh, the ups- other episode I showed you was? I don't recall. I think it was set at night. Uh, I remember the donut shop, and he kept going. Stephen kept going back inside to try and tell a joke. Oh. That it? Uh yeah, some oh I yeah re- I can't remember it yeah I, I remember, remember I remember it. I remember I know which one it is that's, that's my vague description yeah so yeah yep. I guess that's a pretty good sum up of what you expect so far uh, unless you have anything else to say we could just no that's about yeah. it yeah so, back yeah. to the prime recording uh so Hammy your expectations were a bit different from what you got. You want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, wildly different from my uh, from what I was thinking the show is going to be about. I thought there would be a lot more originally like to do with uh, like in space in general. <clears throat> um, just everything's thrown me off and I, I love it for what it is. I, I, I like the characters uh, with some exceptions. <laughs> you know which one. Uh, <laughs> well, you're well there with Steven. Yeah, uh, the show has great music. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's just a lot of... Uh, the fusions. I love the fusions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what I was expecting when I first started watching was something closer to what you would expect on Cartoon Network. I was expecting Dexter's Lab, more or less, with the different cast of characters. I was expecting something short, funny, to the point, uh, entertaining, and I got something a bit different. Um, I was expecting something more episodic with a little bit of a serialized flair, and I don't think I was super far off, but I wasn't expecting it in the way I got it. Because it is a serialized show, but they explore every little detail, big or small, and use the small ones as episodic nodes so to speak, and that was very different. It's also not always funny or silly. It gets serious, and I wasn't expecting that. I stuck around for the complex social concepts and how they're explored in a safe environment, and they spend a lot of time making sure you feel safe in the environment of the show, too. So I quite enjoyed it. Mojo, uh, you started watching with your brother. What did you expect when he asked you to start watching? Yeah, when Good I first started die. watching this, or when I first uh, heard about the show, I uh, I started watching with my younger brother, who was um, a little bit of backstory here. I started watching with him because I asked him what he wanted to do because he was getting ready for a surgery, a very serious surgery, and I just wanted to hang out with him and ask him what he wanted to do. And he said he wanted me to watch the show. He wanted he was trying to get me to watch it for a long time, and I was gonna. I'm notoriously hard to get to watch shows. You could ask Deus about that. I still haven't watched Korra. Um. Yeah. Uh. 
but I, I sat down and watched it with them. I, at first, I really expected something uh, Air Hammer brought up at the end of the last recording we did. Um, and we just played it a little bit there about Air Hammer's expectations. And I had to correct him on how he thought it was going to be kind of SpongeBob-like. Or maybe uh, yeah. just a, a standardized Saturday morning cartoon format where you have like 10 to 15 minute episodes. And you usually get pairs of them. I don't know if there's a name for this format. And I'm sure that something will reference multiple times over the, the series of this, pod, this you know, podcast series. But it's a standardized kind of format. And I kind of expected something like that, but you only got one of the episodes. I don't know what really, really expected. Uh, it really, really took me off guard when I really got into it. Because I sat down and marathoned it, and it really did feel that way. And I'm sure Deus 100% agree with this. It really did feel kind of like you were getting a one half of a SpongeBob episode with a different set of characters for a little bit, but once you hit certain episodes, it's just like, whoa, this is really different. They're doing a lot of world building with this weird micro episode format. I didn't know what to expect, um, at all, really. Uh, and so, yeah, it's hard to talk about it because I didn't go into it with any expectations. But if I had. I did, wouldn't have expected this, is what I guess what I'm saying, what I got. I had no precedent for expecting anything like it. Well said. Well, let's continue on then and go into the first thing you see, the intro theme of the show. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, pretty simple, uh, short and sweet. It introduces the characters, the premise, and it's done. Um, which is, uh good for this uh, format of a show. It's a short format show, like I just thought I'm saying, right? Uh, you don't want to blow three of your 11 minutes on the intro. Uh, there is an extended version online. Uh, we'll pro- I'll probably have a link to that in the description, or wherever the hell we're putting the links. But yeah, there um, is a link, there, or there is a extended version online, but I will say, do not watch it unless you've Infested somewhat into the show, I'll probably put a recommended episode you have to watch to before watching it. If you don't want to spoil yourself, because the extended intro does have some spoilers in it. I'm not crazy about this theme. It's catchy. It does its job. It's a little jingle. Uh, it's certainly not something I'm humming to the tune of. I think oh, yeah. you're right. It it's, doesn't overstay its welcome. I, it's very, very. It's not the last theme we talked about. The Sailor Moon one is like stick in your head you're fucking humming it all day this one's not that uh, the, lo- the extended version has a lot more memorable lyrics to it but it's not what you hear over and over again so um, yeah the intro is what it is it's nothing spectacular what do you think Air Hammer? yeah I enjoyed it uh, I, I do think even like I, I understand why it's short but I think that's where it suffers because it it introduces the characters but it doesn't really give you a whole lot of detail about what the show is Good point. It's like, yeah, okay, very, very we're, the crystal, we're the crystal gems. We always save the day, and if you can, and if you think we can't, we'll always find a way. What does that mean? And then all of a sudden, it's just going right into, this is why the world believes in us. Okay, well, first of all, you never acknowledge the world pretty much <laughs> in the entire series. You only acknowledge one tiny little beach city uh, the, somewhere the in California. The world is acknowledged on some level in the show. I I will contest that. Like they show world maps all the time. There there is definitely beach or, or gym sites around the world. This is true. It's just that it's for some reason I made a comparison to Degeneration X of all things. Um, for those that are into wrestling, they know there's you know their their catchphrase. It was almost kind of like the same thing there. For some reason, it was in my head. Um, no, uh, oh, go ahead. But, I just had a thought. Song. They believe in us because we save the day, but acknowledgement in the show that the world knows of the crystal think... gems. It's like it, it's it's just the thing that is there. You're supposed to assume that everybody knows about them. I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking too much into it. <laughs> no, actually, you spurred a thought on for me. It kind of the the intro theme kind of in a way reminds me of uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's just my the way my mind's working at the moment. I I I immediately thought of the way you're like they don't really go into it. It reminds me of Team Rocket's theme when Jesse and James okay. bust into the scene. 
Mm-hmm. And they just spew their nonsense. I don't know. If it, it fits into that type of jingle. It's kind of short. Yeah. You, you, uh, it feels it has the I same it, feel, in my opinion. I found it curious that the intro theme was created as part of the pilot. Uh, if you watch the pilot episode, Steven sits down and plays that theme on his ukulele, and that's where it came from when they actually oh, yeah. made the also, episodes. We'll it's a much the more polished episode, theme. Pilot episode in the... Uh link as well. It is bizarre, character design-wise. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, you haven't seen it yet, Airhammer? That's I no, I it. don't think you showed it to me yet. Uh, we, we'll definitely have to you, see that and maybe somehow get back to you on what you think about it. Well, we failed on that front. I'm sorry, listeners. <laughs> I Let's totally forgot to about it until this, to this point. It's, I'm, I'm a failure. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Let's go on and uh, not wallow in our failure. Step up. Uh, what about the rest of the music and the sound direction? Uh, because the song has a I'm lot of. I'm going to say um... right now. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the score for the series is absolutely amazing. Uh, there are a lot of vocal songs, but the non-vocal songs, the background music, is absolutely an all-star in every respect. I love the score of this show. Yeah, uh, they're almost two different things, really, aren't they? Like the um, the background music and the sound effects, or the music that plays when it's not part of a big musical esque sh- show where the characters are singing directly about what's going on. You know what's going on? It's like very musical esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, that the the background music is really good, but also the songs are really good. They're they're very different sometimes. Though they start off really goofy, like Cookie <coughs> Cat and. Uh, Giant Woman are really kind of like goofy, silly songs, <laughs> but like um, they become a lot more, don't they? Like they, the newer songs they involve a lot of character growth, and they reveal plot, and they just move things forward. A lot of the early so- like it, the, the songs definitely change over time. Songs have always been a prevalent part of the show, at least in my opinion. Is one of the first noticeable things I noticed about this notice about the show in itself is that songs are a reoccurring thing. Yeah, music is a very strong theme in the show. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's... Greg plays the guitar and is a member of band. Steven plays the ukulele. There's lots of... of uh, Connie plays the piano. Violin. There's a lot of musical stuff. Or no, violin, sorry. I don't know why I said piano. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I love the music. Um, before I even watched the program for the first time, I'd heard uh, Team Four Stars... Uh, giant woman parody uh, Super Saiyan <laughs> yeah, which is amazing yeah. which oddly enough is where I first heard that song as well it wouldn't be until a couple weeks later we we used to or we still kind of do this thing called Friday, uh, Friday Night Flicks and we used to do two, two Tuesdays before that where we would just watch stuff together online and Air Hammer showed me that episode of DBZ Abridged and that was the first time I heard that song and I would go on later to a few weeks later start watching the show with my younger brother and hear it <laughs> in the show. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was interesting. Uh but yeah, the music's good. It's um it's kind of like two separate things. They're both good. They're just two like there's two different types of music in the show. Like at times the, the music is very theatrical, musical esque. And uh, uh that's a good point. I think one of the things that makes me not crazy about the lyrical part of the music is not that it's bad, but it's all somewhat homogenous in its style and sound. I would have really appreciated if they had brought in guest musicians, if not to actually sing the songs, at least perform some background music, compose, write something to really shake cool. up the style. Yeah, oh, just something really cool. to make it stylistically varied. Because if you were to hear the songs Giant Woman, Stronger Than You, uh, any of the other songs, you could probably put it together that these are from the same source, and I would love it if it wasn't all sourced the same way. Uh, that's my one big critique about the music in the show, is it all feels like it's from the same group of people. I think uh, I I kind of like that in a way. I, I definitely agree that it should be done. Like they should mix in other types, but like it should be used sparingly. Give the show it's still this is its main theme. Say like seventy percent is like songs by, you know, the actual crew that's already been doing it, and then sprinkle in some new ones here and there. I don't think it'd be quite the same if... I think part of its... 
a part of the uh, the fact that it, they do feel cohesive is some part of why I like it a little bit. But yeah, I think there should be some variety mixed in. And other shows have done precedent with this um, in other ways. Adventure Time did uh, this exact idea, but with anima- animators. Uh, Adventure Time had episodes mm-hmm. where they brought in guest animation studios. Why can't you just do it with the music as well? We'll see. The show is ongoing, and that's one of the beauties <clears throat> of reviewing an ongoing series, is that as of right now, there are 123 episodes, and we've still got the end of a season. We've still got an extra season afterward. So we don't know what they could do in the time coming. So maybe they can. There's always room for improvement, even for an established show. Yeah. There's lots of wiggle room. There's, it's not set in stone. It's not done yet. So that's nice. Shall we move on to the next section then, guys? Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Next up is theme and plot. Yeah, uh... The thing is, going to be a big one for this show. <laughs> a big section for this show. Um, and, uh, you want to start? Or how about, how about Air Hammer, you start this one? You haven't started the section yet. <laughs> I start this one. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me what oh, you think. Oh, gosh. Steven Steven plot. Plot. Okay, I'm putting so... you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, so a revolution is happening. We have Rose Quartz and Pearl among the, its leaders. Uh, things happen gems get destroyed and they wind up coming to Earth where uh, they eventually form a team and thousands of years later we have Rose uh, coming into contact with uh, Greg Universe (laughs) a relationship is formed and eventually Rose decides okay she wants to Eight. Like this is different for them because they don't have typical procreation. They just they grow gems. So I'm not even sure how this really came to be, but the end result is Steven. Very uh left in the open. She's just mm-hmm. kinda Apparently uh all gems have just had the ability to give themselves a biological womb to which to mate with. That's just the thing they could do. As who knew? It's always been one of the weirder <laughs> aspects of the show. But yeah, it's uh the plot is very uh there's a lot of stuff hidden from the, from the plot right now. Like we a lot of subtle things we don't know, like the build up to a, how exactly the scenario with um Rose Quartz and Pink D- Diamond shattering happened. Uh, we haven't seen any of the other uh, uh or Rose Quartz. We haven't seen any uh we haven't seen White Diamond at all. We don't know very much about what, how like the first encounters of the gyms on Earth. There's lots of stuff still in the open. But the plot is... It, it's pretty interesting. It's good. And it it gives a lot of... Uh, the plot and the setting give a lot of fuel for the uh, the theming. Mm, which is basically yeah, the... like... like in the, my, the way I wrote it is that uh, in this show like love matters. Like it, it, it talks a lot about like all kinds of different relationships, and like not all loves are strictly re- like romantic. There's like sibling relationships. There's like platonic relationships. There's unrequited unrequ- love. There's like that's one of the big things in the in this show and its themes. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Love, intimacy, and family are definitely the cornerstone themes of the show. It explores them as often as it can in as many ways as it can. And in very smart ways. Uh, yeah. And not every relationship is black and white. Not all the characters... I talked about this One of the, this is one of the things I liked in the last show as well. Not all the characters always get along. I guess what I'm trying to say is it really shows relationships well. Not only romantic relationships, which, like we talked about earlier, might be what you've heard about the show of. Oh, it's the one with the, the lesbian aliens, right? But, like, there's a lot of relationships <laughs> that are just as important in this show that are not romantic in, in any way. Like, well, and one of my of lesbian... favorite character relationships in this show is between Amethyst and Steven, right? They both, like, bond over not feeling speaking adequate. Lesbian... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, keep it, I keep on interrupting. No, it's fine. Sorry. I was done. Uh, <laughs> speaking of lesbian aliens, you brought that up earlier. Uh, I love the way the uh, show uses intimacy and uses uh, fusion as an allegory for it. Not necessarily sexuality, but definitely emotional intimacy and reliance. Uh, they very, very much have the allegory lined out for someone of pretty much any age to understand. And 
That is amazing. Yeah, I think I really, a lot of more adult viewers will see that as sexual, but I don't think it necessarily is. It's not. Yeah, it's very much like it's been interpreted as sexual, and this kind of leads into like some of the toxicity, in my opinion, of like some of the fandom, because uh, it's always interpreted, and a lot of people interpret it as sexual type stuff. But like, it's not always sexual likes. Amethyst and uh, Steve, like I said before, Amethyst and Steven's f- fuse, and there, there's no fucking sexual type stuff going on there. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's it's definitely it shouldn't be interpreted that way. It's you're, if you interpret it that way, some of them are obviously like it's very imp- heavily implied that uh, obviously Ruby and Sapphires is supposed to be hinted that way, and it's c- kind of hinted that that. Pearl kind of wanted her fusion when she fused with uh, Rose Quartz to be that way, but it's like I said, there's unrequited loves. There's lots of themes of like it's not always happy. It's it, was very, it has, it has uh, another theme I'd say is that it tries to represent. Or it's not really a theme, but one thing I want to bring up is it trying to uh, represents. It's not always happy. I guess is what I'm gonna say. Like Pearl's uh, re- uh, relationship, unrequited love with. Rose is very much not a happy situation. Uh, but it still brings it up, and it does it tactfully. Yeah, uh, and that very much is pinned down as a romantic interest in Rose. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's been confirmed multiple sources. In the show itself, obviously, if you're somehow blind and haven't seen it in the show, but it's been explicitly stated by the creators that it is meant to be Pearl had romantic feelings for Rose. Rose did not have them in return. Uh, Awkwardness is... Yeah. A, a, happened well you mentioned that bad things can be shown and not everything is happy Uh, I think a good example of that is the fusion Malachite for when she's in the show oh yeah Uh, definitely she is the living embodiment of a bad relationship and I think that also goes back to uh, what you said last episode about how you love Sailor Moon Says and your favorite thing about that was when they called out if you're in a an abusive relationship, get out of it. This oh, yeah. shows, Quite hey, fun. if you're in an abusive relationship, get out of it. But it also shows the aftermath of it. And oh, that's yeah. what I love about it. The, the lessons are shown, not told. Yeah, and that it's is very so heavily, important. It, it's, it deals heavily with Lapis leaving. Uh, like when Jasper and uh, Lapis separate, Jasper, L- Lapis is like, has all kinds of issues. And it's really nicely done. Um, yeah, it's all really good points. Um, the show has a lot of, like, a, I really the w- one thing I want to most hammer home most, and I know Deus would agree with this too. And like, I hate that so much people take away like purely sexual interpretation of the fusion. I hate that, like, because it has so much more meaning. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, there's another thought I had. Um, not everything's black and white. Is what I wrote here. Like, um. It, later on, uh, which is interprets to like it, trying to be not realistic because obviously they're space aliens, right? But it, dealing with stuff as it is in real life, like um, Rose Quartz is at the very beginning of the show ide- idealized as like this. She's the supreme good. We're all looking up to her. She's the best. And then as the show goes on, you're like, okay, some of the decisions she made were pretty damn sketchy. A lot I kinda of things like that progress in the show. Uh, the conflicts in the show also progress. I guess this is a good way for me to uh, bring up the fights. There is some action in the show, though it's not action focused. Uh, and the fights, I feel, are not the best, but not the worst either. Uh, normally, in a fight, if it's really well done, you expect to see the internal struggles of the fighters uh, shown through their movements. And a lot of this shows fights does use dialogue a bit more heavily than I would like. Um, I would like to see their emotions shown a bit more through the actual animation than the dialogue, but I can understand why they were limited. It takes a lot of time and money to animate truly excellent fights, and what they get is pretty good, reasonable. Yeah, I, th- I think the fights are okay. Um, they're somewhere between, like, in my opinion, the, like, I haven't watched a lot of super fight heavy uh, shows, so I don't really have a big pool of stuff to compare against. But in my opinion, one of the best uh, fight scenes I've seen in cartoon animation is uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. 
has some really amazing fight scenes and stuff. And th- this does not go up to that quality. But neither is it as horrible as Sailor Moon fight scenes. Um, yeah. It's a nice Hammer, I think you probably... you. Sorry, Air Hammer, you've probably seen a little bit more action-oriented stuff than uh, we have. How would you estimate the fights and conflicts in the show? Because it starts out with the conflict being Cookie Cat being discontinued, <laughs> and 98 episodes <laughs> later, the conflict is Steven stabbing Bismuth. So that's an escalation. Uh, yeah. How would you estimate the conflicts and fights as a whole? Well, uh we've seen different variety uh like i liked uh smoky quartz versus uh jasper for example that was fun um <clears throat> oh yes smoky quartz <sighs> is such a great character <laughs> see i liked jasper better in that fight i thought jasper's emotions were shown a lot more through her actions and that's what i'd love to see in an action sequence yeah <laughs> but, yeah i still i just like smoky quartz's character <laughs> You don't get to see. Uh, We're the, not the on fusions, the characters yet. Yeah, I know the fusions are so easy to love because you get to see them so rarely. But yeah, that's a topic for later. Um, yeah, the fight scenes. I are think another. Okay, but not nothing super memorable. Is, it, is what I'd say. Yeah, it, it's a very mixed show uh, in that regard. I like them. I like the fights, but they're nothing special. They're not the uh, thing that will make you go home and think, "Oh, wow, that was a great episode." Um, it's really more of a comedy show and yeah. what I like is that the comedy is really well done where the fight scenes are mediocre the comedy is really really well done uh, what kind of jokes each character tells what kind of comedy they engage with regularly, how they engage with the unsafe or not unsafe, the unfamiliar types is all done very very well uh, and it actually grows their characters and is done naturally. Uh, for instance, Pearl is not exactly a slapstick type character, but she once pied herself in the face, and she was so reluctant. You could see it in her body yeah, language, it's, it's in so her good. face. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about when I say I like to see the animation lead in and the comedy in general. It builds the characters. I love that. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, really, really good like really every show has this I'd, I'd like to say where they kind of you could see a jump in uh, production value on stuff that they have thought was really really important and there's some some scenes where like the animation is just so much done better um, you, you were just mentioning that mm. I, I know that's for later but it just had me gave me that thought well, I keep yeah, jumping topics <laughs> yeah you gotta stay focused man that's why I have these uh, little bullet points <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. If you guys don't know, I'm going to give you a little glimpse of the backstage view. I have this entire outline of the episode set up. I've got bullet points. I'm looking at my screen. Mojo clearly is looking at scribbles on a napkin. <laughs> yep. And having <laughs> random thoughts as stuff comes up. And I, I like it, though. A mix of personalities will make this great, right? And, and random <laughs> tangents also will make this the cartoon theme podcast great. That's what uh, makes us a great team, though. If we were all <laughs> the same, it would suck. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Finally, the characters. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I did have one week. last thing. To say. I have one oh, last okay. thing to say on theme and plot. I was doing a little research on the show, trying to make sure I was fully informed, not missed anything, and I found one statement from the creator that she views the show as reverse escapism, that uh, Stephen lives in this magical, mystical world and is trying to push himself further into the real world. You know, That's his human side from Greg and his gym mother mystical adventure side and he is trying to find the balance he's trying to go from this crazy far out world into something a bit more grounded and real yeah, you while could, he is himself and there's definitely hints of that throughout the whole show um, he yeah, so, Stephen very much like uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later in uh, supplemental media but uh, there's the web series online uh, Web, a series of like webisodes and one of those uh, series of webisodes is like with them pretending they're at school and there's an episode where it's mentioned as well where Steven kind of wanted to go to school and he kind of wants to behave like a normal kid and there's an episode where he goes and visits uh, Onion and Vidalia at their house and he looks on like kind of long there's a scene like it's like a brief like 
three second scene where he kind of looks on longingly at uh, Videlia and uh, like Onion having like an actual parent uh, parent kid relationship because let's face it he he does get along with his dad and his dad's in relationships in port but it's not exactly a standard regular relationship because um, mm. he doesn't uh, live with yeah. them and so, so like, what do you make I of that concept that. yeah it definitely yeah, it's a high concept it's there that. Yeah. Um, anything that you would think really shines as an example of that, or um, pulls it one direction or another, uh, either of you? Uh, like I just like oh, I was trying to get to that. Like, there's definitely uh, it's definitely there. Uh, definitely evidence of it. The two little things I tried to point out. He like looks longingly at stuff that's normal school, and like looks at the relationship that it, his quote unquote friend has with uh his parents, you know, there's definitely hints that he's, uh, looking for a no- more normal life. Uh, and it's a good theme. I like it. It's a, it's a nice twist to, uh, the normal type of things you see. Uh, unless I remember has any last input, I think we're on to the next, uh, subject. Uh, yeah, which is characters. And I have a slight <laughs> tie-in with that because, um, another thing that the creator of the show has mentioned is that Steven is supposed to be very loosely based on his her younger brother. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was a nice little tie-in from what we just... That was unintentional. Did not have that planned, but, yeah. Um, there's other things cool about the characters, too. Um, I know you want to talk about the shapes. Um, well, I said, I'm going to save that for the visuals uh, when we go okay. into art and visual design. I'm going to say yeah. that for the next I, I guess that'll be a good transition from <laughs> characters into that. Um, yeah, I have a lot to say. I'm going to have a monologue. I want to give you guys plenty of time to talk. <laughs> I like that um, I like that all the characters um, behave, have different relationships. The, the, uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but like the relationship between Pearl and Garnet is very different re- between the relationship between Pearl and Amethyst and Pearl and Steven and Pearl and Greg and Pearl and Rose. And like she behave, like it's very much... None of the characters are cookie cutter. All of them are very unique. All of them are very like even the side characters for the most part have their own little mm. quirks, quirks that you know make them stand out. And, you know, Onion and Sour Cream and th- the rest of the cool kids and Mayor Dewey. They're all like something weird about them. Something slightly not just standard NPC, standard side fodder. I like that. Um, uh, the actions between the characters have uh, lasting and meaningful effects something I wrote down here um, for this is what I meant it, what I meant by this is there's a whole arc if you will it's only you know, a couple uh, maybe half a dozen episodes long but uh, Garnet is pissed off at Pearl because Pearl kept faking a situation so she would have an excuse to fuse with Garnet and Garnet takes fusion as something very serious and was very upset about it and this whole thing lasted for a series of episodes um I like that. It's, all the progression in the show is not solely based around, like, the monster of the week or a disaster happening. It's just some of the progression is progressed by, or pushed along by, uh, just simple character interactions. What do you guys think about uh, the characters themselves? Well, for me, it all breaks down individually. Like, uh, you guys know that I have a big issue with Steven. Um, Definitely. Yeah, uh, if your show... Like, if your lead character that the show is named after is not appealing, it's just, yeah, it's like, why do I want to be invested in this? And you have to really look past Steven and focus on everyone else because they're really the meat of the program. Um, He does mature as the show goes on, but overall, it's just this whole thing of, okay, so he's a 13, 14-year-old boy that prefers to look around nine, and he acts incredibly childish um yeah, I, I like think, to yeah I think that that's part of the the, the point though like uh, at, or, 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 at some point the, the decision was made that uh, design wise that Steven is gonna stay young and that's a good way to get around the uh, like if this show ran a long time they could just keep him that young right but like um, I, I imagine something something along those lines was thought about but like he it's kind of the pl- plot. Like he is very much implied that he is not going to be a regular human. That he might live a very long time. Yeah, I think. Um, 
and that maybe he is still really young. Maybe he will, like, be 100 years old and still, like, maybe he'll just be, like, turning, feeling 21. I see okay. it differently. Uh, my view is that he has shown himself to be outwardly as old as he feels inwardly. Uh, and I think he's done too much growing, too much emotional growth in the show to stay the way he is. I think it is a excellent mechanism to show that, one, you're only as old as you feel, but also, two, people can be more or less grown up than they look. Yeah, uh, that's it took him true. a long time. It took him a long time for his emotional state to catch up with his age even though his physical state hasn't caught up. And that, to me, is a pretty big deal because it makes some of the younger viewers not feel so bad about acting childish when they feel childish. And I don't yeah. mean, you know, immature. I don't mean petty. I mean, if they old. just enjoy something that people say is, oh, you're too old for that. I yeah, think it's like, a great think... message for for that. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's very definitely uh, a mechanism to, or a way of showing like, hey, it's okay to be a kid. That's what Steven's uh, like overarching character. Otherwise, I is. agree. I agree with both of you. Uh, the side characters, uh, along with the main characters, even the tertiary characters that barely show up at all, are all flawed and at least two-dimensional, if not three-dimensional. Many of them show progress in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, Kiki is a good example of a character that barely ever shows up but has had progress in the show. Yeah, Her she... life has changed. Yeah, uh, there's tons of little... And, and I love that yeah. all the little characters seem to hang out. Like It's just like... There's no... there's They make references to stuff that kind of happened off-screen. They... they, 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 they the rest of the town feels alive. Like they all know each other. Like they're all indeed. You know, um, Likewise, I really love. I agree. A, when the, a lot of the side characters interact, because I, I like I love the cool kid episodes. Lars hanging out with <laughs> the cool kids. Um, they're just silly little side crap, but still, I like the side characters a lot in the show, and they make uh, a lot of it w what it is. Uh, likewise, I agree with Airhammer that. Steven is the titular character and he is the hub from which the very impotent spokes are centered. Uh, the other characters are really the ones that you watch the show for, but Steven is the glue that keeps them all together and uh -huh. that is what makes him important. Uh, yeah, it, it, if that's he also were not point. his... Yeah. Yeah. Were he not his weird, quirky self uh, who shows wonderment in the mundane who is way too immature at times, yet capable of amazing maturity, it wouldn't be the show that it is. So, yeah, if we just that's... erased Steven from the show, a lot of the kooky, zany like stuff that makes the show what it is wouldn't have happened. Like There would never be a, oh my god, the, 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 the gym that makes clothing comes alive got into the fry suit. I think more than yeah. that. More than that, if you replace Steven with a generic cartoon kid from any... B kind of show it yeah. wouldn't be the same show there's so much heart to every character they made including him uh, that it matters I think a lot of people will be watching for Pearl Amethyst and Garnet though they have a lot of appeal each and every and, one and more and more for Lapis and Peridot as well mm. uh, are becoming increasingly uh, important characters I think it'll be a short, not very long before they hopefully get a star on them, like you mentioned the other and night. And Greg, yeah, poor Greg. <laughs> Greg needs a star. <laughs> He's an official crystal gym. What about Connie? Does she have one yet? Yeah, Hello, Connie. Connie. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Connie deserves one. So for a show so so based on great characters, I have not much to say because the characters speak for themselves. All you have to do is watch the show. Uh, Pearl comes off immediately as this uptight, neurotic individual. Garnet immediately shows you that she's cool, tough, level-headed. Amethyst is immediately shown to be wild and slovenly. What they are 
comes off immediately and it really comes down to how they grow throughout the series yeah uh every character has had uh i think garnet maybe the least but like pearl's definitely improved she kind of somewhat gotten over the whole rose thing Gar- uh amethyst has bonded with other people or other gems that were made on earth she's gotten a little bit over her feeling bad for having come from earth or feeling yeah, she bad. She had some self esteem. Yeah, she had self massive self esteem issues, and she's getting better and better about it. And all the characters had growth. Uh, like Peridot is totally different character from when she was first introduced. Lapis is <laughs> Lapis. Uh, I like Lapis, <laughs> but still, <laughs> she's just uh, she's all over the place. Lapis, but yeah, Lapis has gone through actually a lot. Uh, she started off as a very warm and caring character. Then she got in a very abusive relationship where she was revealed to be the dominant abusive one. And now she's just kind of emo and trying to adjust to a new life. Uh, she was trapped in that mirror so long that she is just an emotional wreck. Uh, I don't know if I like the new flat, sort of uh, milder lapis instead of the warm lapis, but it does make for a funnier character. I think she'll uh, get back to it. That'll, that'll be her character growth going back to what she was before Jasper. That That's the whole... That's going to be her whole progression. Like, they showed Do you guys have could favorite be. characters? Do you um, have any favorites? It's... The show is... It's hard to choose favorites because, like, some... If I chose my favorite, it'd instantly probably be a fusion. The fusions are so cool. Because, but you can't see them... Go ahead. No. Uh, I really like Smoky Quartz. Like, um... Just design-wise, I think it's so kooky purple three-armed yo-yo like it's just silly i like it um design it, it's just and it's a good representation of what those two characters look like together they're both kind of pudgy and short so it, it's just done really well all the fusions do that to be honest but i don't know if that one struck me um individually like probably connie or maybe lapis and peridot as a, as a duo they're kind of like attached to each other now they're kind of uh go hand in hand I don't know it's hard to choose there's so many good characters Onion is a good uh, mention of course I know you really like Onion yes my boy <laughs> what about you Air Hammer yeah uh, for me uh, Connie is up there um, uh, out of the main group I think I like Garnet the most uh, Peridot is pretty cool um, oh uh, much I'd like as to just I dislike mention all the rubies all of them just all of them everyone Oh. They're all adorable. <laughs> Even when they're trying to be evil, they're adorable. Like, the rubies are great. Every single one of them. Yeah, uh, as much as I dislike him in some cases, and he does have his great moments, I would have to put Steven up there. Um, Onion, so, of course, is just insane. You, so you've actually grown... <laughs> you're, you're just you're just yanking her chain trying to pull on that you hate Steven. You've grown on him. Steven is absolutely unlikable in the first half of the first season to me, but he grows on you quickly and he has his great moments. Okay. Um, I'm glad to hear you. Yeah. It, it's just the whole thing of how childish he is that I brought up and it takes several episodes before they do his, uh, his birthday episode where you actually learn how, how old he really is. Yeah. And that's a big focus of that episode. Um, actually, or one I of the others that's... where he's aging. That episode is, uh, well, the aging one is early on, but the birthday episode is actually season two. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's how long it takes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, <laughs> stuff like that. It just seems like it should have been uh, told a little bit sooner. But at the same time, it kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat waiting for more details. I don't know. It's. And then, uh, yeah, uh, based on what we were uh, just talking about, uh, the rubies, they're all cool. Uh, I like the most recent episode where um, <laughs> one of the rubies returns. Navy. Uh, yeah, Navy. <laughs> um, yeah, I linked you guys a picture a couple days ago, um, which was um, it, it's like the scene of when the rubies land and come out of their pod is supposed to be an homage to when uh, Vegeta gets out of his pod in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, along with the ruby that Steven nicknamed Eyeball, having her ruby just where Vegeta's scouter would be. Um. <laughs> oh, that's a really neat reference I never noticed. Um, 
Wow. And uh, well, uh, there are other Dragon Ball uh, things in this show. I mean, yeah, we'll, uh, you take we'll, we'll have to Luke. save that for later. For the other references. Oh yeah. <laughs> there, that is going to be a whole thing. References. Oh god, okay. yeah. Uh, um, so, hmm. how about we move on to art and visual design? I've got a lot to say about the characters. Do you guys have anything to say about so the art? I. <laughs> the the, the, the uh, visual design of well, the. The, of the show in general, yeah, of the characters of the art, uh, of the show in general, uh, I like, I really like how it handles color. Yes, everything is kind of, it's very pastel, but it's still colorful. You know, there's a lot of soft colors, and everything is, it almost looks watercolored a lot of the time, right? But it's still colorful, and it, it knows when to cut that out. It'd be really easy for them to just keep going on that with no matter what. But there's a lot of dramatic scenes, like uh, there's a scene in particular where in the Connie's mom in the hospital where Connie's trying to get her sword back and all the colors are like deepened down to like dark dark blues and grays and stuff where it's supposed to be spooky and scary it, it's handled really well uh, scenes where like Amethyst is sad and hiding in the hole or, that she was more, uh, popped out of because she's a, ashamed of being from Earth or, and like how she thinks she's a big mistake and has all these self esteem issues it's all colored, the, the colors toned it down it's really done well that's my main talk about it. Th- that's my main point in the art yeah my guys? focus is more on uh, character design um steven uh, his eyes freak me out uh <laughs> the, the stars throughout... there's obviously a star theme throughout the entire show it, it's just the static look uh in the first season it's like every emotion he just has this bland soulless look in his eyes similar to onion um, in that he just <laughs> looks forward regardless of what he's feeling or regardless of what he's doing and then there are other moments where I have compared it to say uh, if you're watching some kind of crazy YouTube poop video or somewhere you'll see a scrunched up oddly animated face and this is what Steven has on his face half the time yeah, in a, a situation lot of the facial expressions um, done, a lot of the facial expressions done and stuff are yeah. direct references to like meme faces online um, yeah uh, also, another I think a lot one, of the, what you have to say about uh, the weird like no expression on his face and this goes to like the way he like you were talking about no expression in the battle scenes and stuff too I think it just might be the a, a, a product of the way the the art style. It's all everything's all really simple shapes. Yeah, um, like I like I, I described his no uh, his face as a toaster nose. Um, he kind of has this uh, toaster or outlet uh, that's in the <laughs> middle. Yeah, I see. It. The, I see it. I see the design gets so bad to the point where at times <laughs> this his nose is up in between his eyes and <laughs> it looks so bizarre <laughs> yeah like I said it's, it's uh, a product of the art style it, you don't I, I don't I, think I would... so I'm, I'm going to disagree yeah. with you there I think that a simpler art style should make it easier to make your characters more expressive because you have more to play with you don't have any fine details that you have to adhere to uh, I mean that's how you see Cartoon characters with their eyes popping out of their head. Yeah, but that, that would, that's not what the this show is. It's like a simpler art style, but it's not Looney Tunes. It's People not that exaggerated, but and, I and think we do you have still... some stuff like that. With the uh, every time Steven's excited, his eyeballs turn into stars. We do have that. Yeah, yeah okay. I like that. Yeah, uh, but no, I don't. I don't see simplistic character design as a good excuse for poorly emoted characters and I think in some cases the characters are a little poorly emoted I I love the show but I'm willing to give it some critique now and then and I think that is definitely a valid one thank you Aaron for bringing that up (laughs) Um, yeah like out of the other character designs uh, I I do uh, like the crystal gems Um, Garnet I guess comes off the most because she's so interesting uh, you look at, uh, I forget what episode number it is, but uh, the one where they look at uh, the flashback of when Ruby and Sapphire first fused, and yeah, Garnet just, yeah, it she just looks so different. She's got this whole bubblegum kind of look to her. Her hair is blue and red. She's got part of Sapphire's dress molded it, into the design. Um, it's, uh... but, 
It's episode 74, I just checked. It really... Uh, okay. Um, which, this mm-hmm. transitions to something I wanted to say, too, because, like, the characters change over time. Their design changes over time, which is nice. Like, as the character grows... So yeah, every time time. they back into their gem when they project themselves again their uh their overall look changes up so garnet goes from what i just described and now she has really changed up her look her hair is no longer blue and red it looks more like a giant afro and uh, a lot of her look is centered around ruby where a lot of her attitude is based on sapphire which is interesting. She's very much uh, fights like yeah, she fights like Ruby, thinks like Sapphire, um, but yeah, it's really good. Uh, I really like how the uh, art of each character changes over time. Uh, except for Steven, he seems a little static. Obviously, he. I, I don't know if, how much they're willing to change up the title character. That might be for uh, branding purposes. Yeah, the star I, shirt and so forth. <laughs> yeah, red star shirt. Like mm-hmm. they might not switch him up that much, but uh, all the main crystal gems have gotten major major rehauls in the way uh, they look. Peridot lost her uh, limb enhancers and stuff. Lapis ha- is the mm-hmm. only one that really hasn't changed a lot, but she had a f- whole fusion thing going on, so I guess she kind of. But uh, yeah, that's one of my main things. So, what do you have to say, Deus? Uh, so one of the things that I was really taken by when I saw the character designs of this show and really started to examine them was how wonderful the designs are in their simplistic way. Uh, a lot of them use shape and color to really communicate what the character is about. Uh, I, I'll put a link in the description for a much better uh, description of... Uh, the process that I'm going to describe very briefly, but in essence uh, circles are used to describe a character who's maybe more bubbly who's uh, more approachable and friendly and you can immediately see a lot of circles in Steven Universe's design. His hair is curly, his shape is rounded nothing about him is pointed at all. In fact, most of the humans tend to be more or less rounded and then you have circles and squares and immediately you see Garnet she is a series of three squares mostly the most important part of her body is her face and her hands they're all squares visually I mean her gloves are you know glove shaped but when you have, always see them they're always square to your eye uh, and the square represents something strong reliable something that is sort of a dependable uh, shape and her most identifiable parts are those and then you see subtly in her shoulders and her hips a hint of curve to sort of uh, reveal that she is a bit more approachable and friendly if you let her. Uh, Likewise her coloration uses hot pinks and magentas to signify that she's got some passion underneath her cool demeanor. Stephen, however, He uses primary colors, superhero colors, bold, vivid, energetic. So you can see already, just from those two characters... (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You can see just from those two characters, so much about them are communicated to you just from looking at a still image of them. Uh, Pearl, for instance, she's mostly a stick figure with some weird triangular and circular shapes on her head. Her hair, her nose, both triangles. She communicates the shape of the triangle, which is typically more thoughtful, skilled, and competent. And she is. She is the most skilled, competent, and thoughtful crystal gem. She has some rounded shapes in mostly her head shape, because, like I said, she's a stick figure. Um, So she comes off more like that. Uh, Her coloration uses a lot of pastels, a lot of subtlety. You have to actually put in some effort to see and distinguish between them. That emphasizes uh, some of her elegance and fastidiousness. Amethyst, much like Stephen, she's mostly a circle. Well, she's kind of a shapeshifter more than any <laughs> others, but her primary shape is a circle, right? Mm-hmm. 
she's got sloppy hair. Immediately, you see that she's friendly, a little slovenly. Uh, you can also see her main color is a pale, cool purple, showing that while she may be friendly, that sometimes she's a little aloof. So she's easygoing, but can kind of be distant. And that lines up very well with what you see. Uh, so much of the character designs in the show are so well thought out. They are not just stick figures designed. There's a lot of thought put into these. Uh, another good example is Peridot. I mentioned before how the triangle represents skill and cunning. And, yeah, and she Peridot's entire head... head. Yeah, the triangle. Peridot's in, yeah, her entire head is a giant triangle. In fact, I think uh, at one point Stephen calls her mysterious triangle at the foot of my bed. <laughs> and there's a lot of conflict because since they're such similar characters, uh, to call a conflict between Peridot and uh, Pearl when Peridot first turns. Um, yeah, I just I really a wanted whole, to bring little up three episode arc about it, or th- like three or four episodes where they kept, you know, um, it's mostly because of some of the, the home world treat Pearls like shit stigma but also but you know the character design wise they're both kind of fill in the same slot in a lot of ways they're very uh, smart very kind of tech savvy in some ways they're very uh, studious exactly if you will. and that's how their shapes communicate these mm-hmm. ideas to you that's why I wanted to bring this up because I recognize that and uh, if you want to know more about the whole idea of this I will put a link in the description to someone who covers other characters and does it better than I could in this so short amount of time, but uh, the character designs really blew me away at how smart and savvy they are, and how much they do with the limited lines and palette that they have. It's very, very well done. Yeah, I, uh, I it goes back to what I said. Uh, the show is extremely well planned out, even if it's not delivered in the most coherent and steady way. Then again, it's the unsteadiness that leads to unpredictability. Other than that, I will echo your comments much earlier about how they use color in the show to change the entire palette that they use. Uh, I know anytime they use uh, changes, pink it, or the, red light. Yeah, the uh, well, the way I guess what I was trying to say with that was that the color is very much um, affects the mood and the emotion of the, the scene. And the, of course, the, that's a, a that's a major filmmaking. You know, it, for film, cartoon, whatever, your your lighting and your color is going to affect how you're supposed to feel about it. But they really take advantage of it in this. It could have been done. I'll a go lot. so far as to say it also feels natural when they do it. It never yeah. feels out of place. You it never makes your brain disconnect from what you see. Yeah. A good example I have is the first episode. Stevani appears when they go to the nightclub. The lights in the nightclub are purple or red every character you see has purple skin just straight up purple skin but your eye reads it as normal colored skin with yeah, purple they're... light and that is a masterful Speaking use of because Stavani, all that's a character is... we didn't really bring up that I think should have got yeah. brought up um, <laughs> well, I mean, let's rewind a bit uh, I really really like the uh, this goes back to a thing I brought up to uh that Sailor Moon did really well as well. They kind of hammer home some important messages with this, and Stevani is one of the the, uh, the vehicles, if you will, of uh, or not messages, but themes, if you will. Stevani is the driving force for one of them. There's a a, a plot where Stevani's very uncomfortable with the way people were like looking at her and treating her, and it's brought up in like a tactful and interesting way for young people to watch. Like, and it, you know, hey. You don't have to put up with that type of shit. Is you know kind of the recurring th- or theme for that, and I I, I kind of like that. So that that was my little mini rewind. I kind of wish I had brought that up. Forgot to bring up Stevani. Yeah, let's like, let's move on. We've been sidetracked enough. Uh, uh yeah. So <laughs> do you guys have anything else to say about the art and visual design? Because it is really well done. Uh, yeah, I, I think, think we, we summed up discuss some of the highs and lows, especially the character designs. Um, I, there's a lot of really beautiful backgrounds, uh, yeah. which brings back to another point. Uh, the person that Steven is based on, the younger brother of the creator, 
actually yeah. does some of the artwork for background design on the show. Another little throwback. But yeah, the ba- uh, the background design is, you know, a lot of the backgrounds are like not really important, but like they don't they never do the thing where like you just have a cheap throwaway background that you don't give a fuck about. When they're out on a like on an adventure in a uh, a cave, the background looks interesting. You know, when they're out uh, at a ancient ruin, there's stuff about. Uh, when they're in Steven's room, there's toys and interesting things about to look at. You know. Well, speaking of those toys and interesting things, I think that leads us into the next section, doesn't it? Comparisons, uh, yeah. inspirations, and influences. Because man, those toys and things. Uh, <laughs> There's definitely. Uh, Steven likes everyone. guys. He likes Ranger Guy especially. Uh, <laughs> he also yeah. particularly has a uh, blue hedgehog <laughs> toy. He's got a uh, comic book of a uh, female sailor scout, possibly from the moon. Uh, uh, it's the show has so many good references. a thousand. He has a Small cloud references. toy. He has a cloud, a figure of cloud. Do you know how much a fucking action figure cloud costs? I know it's like crudely drawn because it's a cartoon, but pretty much any official like Square Enix figures are not cheap. So jealous. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys run wild because. My That's note has thousand like, small references, and it also says in parentheses, "Let them talk." So, yeah, y'all go to it. The, 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 there's too many to list. There's obvious, like I said, there's there's a rep, there's a scene where it shows his toy, some of his toys, and he has a uh, that weird alien guitar guy from it's some rhythm game that was on the PS One. I can never remember the uh, the name of it. And there's Cloud. There's Sonic. Um, that there's points where he's constantly playing a 64, and the games he plays on the 64 are all references to actual games or like genres of games. Um, yeah, he's got a variety of systems. I've seen a GameCube as well. Yeah, he has uh, Sailor Moon comic books. I'm sure there's tons of comic. A, a, a lot of the other comic books are uh, stuff, but I don't catch the reference to. Um, there's a scene where you see a bunch of the games he has on his shelf, and they're all modeled off of, like, actual game cases that were on PlayStation. Um, one of which being a, the case from the game Gran Turismo. There's tons of little references right. like that. Spread out. Right. The I'm going to blow show. you guys... I'm going to blow somebody's mind with this, because I'm about to lay a reference down that's very heavy in the show, but it has a very unlikely source. So there is a horror manga by uh, a very famous mangaka. It's called The Enigma of Amigaria Fault. And uh, it is completely, blatantly referenced by the visuals of the kindergarten. The human-shaped holes in the walls of the cave are absolutely, you cannot deny it, a reference to that manga. That is the weirdest, most out of place reference I have ever seen in any show <laughs> because that is a psychological horror manga and it's got a place in this very light hearted children's show <laughs> uh, I'll also put a link to some kind of content for that in the description uh, because man that ain't the same thing uh, I guess the big difference is that people go into the holes instead of come out in that <laughs> But, uh, yeah. How's that for a weird reference? Yeah, one of the uh, references I want to talk about is not necessarily a direct reference. I, it's, I guess influence is where this fits. Um, to me, this show fits... I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier in a different context, but this show fits in the same place as Avatar, both, I'm assuming, in Korra and The Last Airbender, and that they're very much shows made in a western studio so they don't fit the technical you know they're not technically anime but they are very much anime inspired this show less show less so than avatar but it still feels in a lot of ways inspired by that type of the, you know the way animes were handled compared to it's episodic I and could, i could not agree more i wholeheartedly agree and i think it might be as inspired if not even more than Avatar, not based on the appearance or anything, but yeah, this the is art. Avatar is definitely with the art is the main drawing. Yeah, there, uh, so. but more so the fact that with the slice of life 
mixed in with the drama, mixed in with how the characters interact. Everything comes together. This show is a shoujo anime with Western family programming dressed as a veneer. Yeah, and it also uh, has um, it even has omakes. You know, animes have like the weird like alternate dimension weird spin-off crap that's like attached to the end of episodes or whatever. Uh, this has this as well, and with the the series of uh, clips on the official YouTube channel, um, even has that type of anime connection. So it's just something interesting that I thought I'd uh, throw out there. Oh no, no, you are completely right. One of my points is exactly that: that this show has the soul of a shoujo anime, uh, yeah. and it's been altered and redesigned and dressed up to fit better with the audience that it's targeted at but it's done in such a wonderful way it enhances the experience and makes it better than either of its two uh, parts it is a fusion <laughs> fusion joke uh, so uh, yeah was there any uh, other inspirations or parallels that you want to point out if we spent all the time pointing yeah, out all the references, there's so many. Uh, yeah, there's so yeah. many. I guess it's like time I guess. to talk about uh, supplemental uh, media, which is, uh, I guess, I'm going to take over mostly on this one. Oh no, take the stage, please. Um, so yeah, there's some I've already talked about. Um, there's an extended intro. Yeah, I already t- talked a little bit about um the web series online, which consists consists of a few different things. There's a series of episodes called, uh, little mini episodes called The Classroom classroom Gyms, which is like this classroom-esque setting where they, it's very chibi-esque, where they're uh, even chibier than regular Steven Universe art, if that makes any, any sense. But uh, it's very chibi-esque, and it's like um, trying to teach the basics of some of the mechanics. Oh, what's fusion? Oh, what, what are gems? You know, stuff like that. It's like little mini like teaching concepts about the show. There's, um... The rest, the rest of the little episodes are really kind of scattering. There's one where like some characters are singing karaoke. There's one where like Lion and like Steven is doing a cooking show. It's very much just a scattering of weird shit. It's to- all all this is totally skippable. There's nothing important plot wise in the, any of these, by the way. For video wise, that's pretty much it. There's a, a whole scattering collection of miscellaneous books. This is what I found most interesting. And I didn't realize that, and I guess it shouldn't have surprised me because shows like this always spring up merchandise. In fact, some shows are specifically meant for that, you know, say Transformers or Ninja Turtles or G.I. Joes. But, like, um, there's a lot of scattering of random books. There's a series of books that are quizzes about the show. Uh, there's puzzles, uh, Mad Libs, etc. One thing I thought was really cool, and that's a really important, or, or the most appropriate, in my opinion, those other ones are kind of throwaway kid stuff and for me anyway it's nothing I'd be interested in but uh, this one if I played music I would be they have a a book that has the sheet music for all the songs that's kind of neat otherwise uh, in print there is a uh, eight issue comic book series they're all kind of um, minorish plots uh, even minier versions of like what the episode throw uh, plots are they're all very off the side stuff the, the the most notable comic, in my opinion, is a one-off special called uh, the Greg Universe Special, and it's all kind of heartwarming stories about Greg and Steven bonding. It's not bad. There's a new Force issue series of comics I have not got to, and I have not read yet. I will probably get back to you on that. And there's another one coming out this year, another comic series coming out this year, that obviously I know nothing about and I might talk about in like a future clip or something on the channel but yeah that's pretty much it uh, I looked so into it quite a bit um, that's there's not all that much to it there's a couple the game wise there's a uh, a browser game a web game and they all seem like shovelware so yeah I do I know really... that there's a console game coming later yeah. this year uh, this is being recorded uh, March 2017 so late March so yeah. keep in mind that if you listen to this later uh, when we say coming out it's time sensitive yeah, I should have mentioned that yeah that's a good point but yeah uh, all in all the supplemental 
media is very uh, hit or miss. I I really like the idea of the sheet music. The the Greg at the Universe Special comic is pretty good. There is a another book that I didn't mention that I wanted to point out because I think I'm gonna buy it, and I'll probably get back to you on this as well. It's a kind of novelization, if you will. It's a picture book, a kid's picture book, of the episode The Answer, um, which we talked about earlier is the episode where it shows how uh, the gems that make up Garnet, Ruby and Sapphire, met. But the book, the, in the book version, it tells a story just like it does in the in the cartoon, but in storybook form. But it has these panels at the top and bottom where the characters, Ruby and Sapphire, are talking about the events of the episode as a kind of a in between, not quite fourth wall breaking, but like still wall 3.5, if you will. <laughs> I don't know how you would put it, but they're kind of like referencing the stuff happening. They're kind of narrating on it. I guess that they're supposed to be telling the story to uh, Stephen, maybe, is the, uh, the framing of it, but it's very interesting mm-hmm. looking. It's enough, intrigued me enough that I'm going to pick it up, probably. Possibly an internal monologue of each one of them? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how exactly it's structured right now. It's It was interesting enough to intrigue me. But yeah, that's okay. pretty much all I have to say on it. Uh, it's kind of hit uh, or miss. For, for such a new show, it does have quite a bit of material, uh, especially in print. That's the most surprising. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. But yeah, I guess that's... um. That brings up pretty much all the stuff we wanted to talk about, right? Uh, everything but our final thoughts. Shall we conclude this? Uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you lead, Airhammer? Yeah. Um... I'm just looking forward to more. Like you told me how it will come out in bits and pieces, or they'll give us a Stephen bomb every now and then. Um, I'm hoping to see more fusions. Like that's one of the bigger things for the show for me. Uh, I just love seeing the new characters and how they develop. Uh, I would love to see if uh, you know how Peridot and Lapis uh, evolve their characters now that they're on Earth and stuff like that. Uh, if any of their designs will change up over time. Yeah, I'd like to point out, by the way, uh, you want you said you want to see more. I mean, it is just did the same thing to me. But yeah, we the most current episode as of this recording was season four, episode twenty, uh, "Room for Ruby." Um, mm-hmm. So that's for reference from what we've recently seen. Uh, we're currently waiting on a lot of answers. We're waiting on. What was the last straw for you know why Pink Dam- Diamond is shattered? Where the fuck is White Diamond? What the, is the cluster just gone now? Is it just a thing that's never going to happen I, again? <laughs> I think it's. I think by the time the series ends, we're likely to do a second uh, podcast on the end of Steven Universe. Oh yeah. So when the series comes to a close, you can expect that. Uh, we'll yeah. probably have a bit more to say about the series then. Right now, this is really just a sort of a overview. Um, very broad strokes, because there's a lot to say about this show. A lot of good things, a lot of intricacy. I think we could probably have done an entire podcast on fusions <laughs> themselves. Yeah. But Uh-oh. instead, we have to leave it a bit vague, because we have to have time for everything. Yeah, I my final thoughts, it's a good show. It's one of my favorites. It's probably... This show and Ruby are the only two currently running cartoons I actively watch. And it's uh, Ruby with a W, not with a yeah. U. <laughs> not Navy. Yes. Not eyeball. R-W-B-Y, not... a web show, which we'll get an episode later. <laughs> I think Days would kill us if we didn't get an episode of that. But, uh, oh, um, we'll strangle you it, guys it, with your own intestines. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that says something. Um, like I said earlier in this call back to the very beginning of what, when we started recording... Um, I am notoriously hard to get to watch shows, but once I get to watch them, and I enjoy them, and I like them, and get hooked, I religiously watch them. They very rarely fall off. Yeah, that's actually one of my final thoughts. Give yourself a chance to get hooked. It has the capability, but the first season is such a drag. It's better viewed as a flashback than a warm-up. Let yourself get into it however you feel like. If you have the time to sit through season one and watch it sequentially more power to you I didn't I couldn't have got into the show if I didn't skip ahead don't feel bad about it if you have to skip ahead to get into it because better to be a fan of something the way you like it than to have not seen it because 
the first bit is bland. Um, also, having reviewed the whole four seasons recently for this podcast, uh, the mental highlight reel this show gives you is far more potent than sitting down and re-watching the episodes. Uh, for me, my memories of this show are so much more stronger and positive than sitting down and watching the episode from which they are. I think that is a symptom of some of the production. And I won't really get into that on this episode. I think maybe we can uh, make an entire discussion about production of cartoons and how it can hinder and help. Suffice to say, it's not a perfect show, but there's so much to enjoy that I would recommend it. Okay, I'm going to give Air Hammer the chance to say anything else he wants to say, final thoughts, and then I have a final, final thought, and then we'll cut the end, because uh, I do have something we've neglected to mention. So go ahead, Air Hammer. Do you have anything to say? I guess the only other thing would be a bit on Lapis that I left out from earlier. Um, it's her name. <laughs> uh, I made a Dragon Ball reference earlier. Um Lapis Lazuli, like all of the care, all of the gems are named after actual gems. So you know, amethyst, garnet, pearl, etc. Uh, Lapis Lazuli is the actual names of androids seventeen and eighteen in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, seventeen is Lapis, and eighteen is Lazuli. Uh, right. They never reference this in the anime, as far as I know. But yeah, um, they are just enhanced humans. They're not actual full uh, on robots. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of neat. Um, for any other final thoughts, yeah, um, just give me more. <laughs> That's the most of it. Uh, if, if anyone else really gets into the show, I recommend checking out the 2016, uh, 2016 Comic-Con panel. Uh, they do a live concert with the uh, the cast on stage uh, throughout way. the first half. It's, pre it's pretty neat. So, yeah. Uh, so my final, final thought is uh, something we neglected to mention, but it has to be said. Do not, under any circumstance, watch the Uncle Grandpa crossover episode. The what? I'm sorry, this doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that is the second episode of Animated Intelligence. Tune in next time where we'll watch, uh, we're going to be talking about um, the first season of Attack on Titan. Bye! All right. <laughs> See ya. Thank you.